Good morning, readers. Today is Friday, February 19th, and you're listening to First Chapter Fridays, presented by the Baker Free Library. My name is Juliana, and I am the library's youth services librarian. Welcome to this week's program. To skip this introduction, please jump ahead to the next segment. Every Friday, I'll be sharing the first chapter of a middle grade book with you. Middle grade books are designed for readers aged 8 to 12, but they can be enjoyed by readers of every age. We hope that this program will introduce you to authors and titles you've never read or considered before. If you like today's chapter, you can place a reserve on the featured book using the library's catalog or by calling the library at 224-7113. If you'd like something to do while you listen, head to the library's website, bowbakerfreelibrary.org. On the 4Kids page, listed under Events and Programs, you'll find a link to an active listening worksheet that you can download and print. While you're listening today, jot down any thoughts, questions, or ideas you have about the story. You can also draw, doodle, pick up your room, build with Legos, or work on a craft project while you listen. Alright readers, let's jump into today's story. This month, our take-home creative kits explore the world of art and artists. To coincide with that theme, today's featured book is all about the power of imagination and creativity, and the problems it can cause when it unexpectedly runs amok. Today, we'll read the first chapter of Henry and the Chalk Dragon by Jennifer Trafton. In the town of Squashbuckle, just about anything can happen. And when Henry Pentwistle draws a mighty chalk dragon on his door, the dragon does what Henry least expects. It runs away. Now Henry's art is out in the world for everyone to see, and it's causing trouble for him and his friends, Oscar and Jade. If they don't stop it, the entire town could be doomed. To vanquish the threat of a rampaging chalk dragon, Sir Henry Pentwistle, knight of La Mancha Elementary School, is going to have to do more than just catch his art. He's going to have to let his imagination run wild. Want to hear more of this story? Let's jump into the first chapter of Henry and the Chalk Dragon by Jennifer Trafton. Chapter 1. The Bedroom Door Henry Penwistle's bedroom door was the sort of door where adventures began. His mother had painted it with a special kind of black paint that he could draw on with chalk, and when Henry went into his room and closed the door, six feet of black space towered above him like a blank sheet of paper. He drew many loopy, dizzy, spiky, wonderful shapes on the door, and then erased them, and then drew again, and erased again, and drew and erased, and drew and erased some more. Over the years, the black paint began to wear thin and crack. The eraser no longer erased the door completely, and the black space was like a night full of shooting stars, chalky specks of red and orange and yellow and green and blue and purple. Sometimes Henry ran out of chalk and used crayons or markers or pencils or even finger paint instead, and no amount of erasing or scrubbing could get rid of all those marks. The drawings floated on the blackness like colorful ghosts. And one day, on top of all the ghostly shapes and swiggles and smears, Henry drew a picture of a dragon. It was a work of art. The dragon's teeth were like silver daggers. Its wings were so wingish they could have lifted Henry's whole bedroom into the air and carried it to a secret lair on the other side of the sea. Its body was green, jungle green, which was Henry's favorite color because it made him think of exotic creatures and perilous places. This dragon was everything a dragon should be, fierce and fearsome and full of fire. Henry tossed aside his chalk, stood back to look at the door, and sighed in perfect contentment. He was wearing his raincoat with the aluminum foil taped all over it that glittered like a knight's suit of armor. Strong, heroic, invincible armor. He liked the word invincible. Nothing could get through his suit of armor. The raincoat came all the way down to his knees, and it had a wide collar and rolled up sleeves. A silver duct tape covered milk carton with its bottom cut off, perfectly fit on his head as a helmet. I am Sir Henry Penwistle, he said proudly to the dragon, and I will slay you. Then he dropped to his knees and rummaged under his bed. 
He drew out a long cardboard tube that had once been in the middle of a roll of wrapping paper covered with tiny Santa Clauses. Now it was a sword. Henry brushed off his armor. He held his sword high. You have dared to invade the town of Squashbuckle, and I am its protector. Prepare to meet your doom. Henry jumped over the drawings of dragon-fighting monster trucks that covered the floor. Waving his sword in sweeping circles, he whirled past the overflowing book chest with its stirred-up soup of favorite stories. Stories about wild things and unlikely heroes, chocolate factories and tiny motorcycles, buried giants and mock turtles. Where did you hide the prisoners? he yelled. Show me, or there'll be nothing left of you but chopped dragon liver. But the dragon did not move. It was a stubborn beast, and wily as a snake. Aha, you're going to be tricky, are you? Well, let's see if you can dodge my super sneaky sideways sword swipe. Henry climbed onto the bed and took a bouncing leap over his Play-Doh sculptures of trees and towers. He kicked his legs, spun around, sliced the air with his sword, and landed in a pile of dragon boop, which had once been green socks. That was awesome, he whispered. I've got to draw that part. Dropping the cardboard tube, he crawled over to his bed. Then he pulled a book out of a secret place under his mattress that no one knew about but him. It was a sketchbook with blank pages for drawing, and on the cover he had written in tall, grand letters, Sir Henry's Quest. Quest. It was probably the best word of all the words ever made up. It meant going on a really long journey to find something you want a whole lot. Oscar Rockbottom had helped him to spell it right. Oscar was Henry's best friend. If life were a drinking straw, Oscar would be the paper wrapper soaring off the end. But even Oscar had only occasionally been allowed to peek inside his sketchbook. The book was a record of all of Henry's adventures. It was a story, Henry's very own story, a story made with pictures. And he imagined someone adding words to the picture someday and making it into a real book, like the books in his book chest but it would be a secret book no one else could read. Sir Henry's Adventure. Sir Henry's Quest. How would it end? He didn't know, but he knew he would be a great hero and save the entire world. Looking through the sketchbook was like stepping into his story. On one page, King Kong, the giant gorilla, was beating his hairy chest and carrying off Henry's teacher, Miss Pimpernel. Henry still remembered his mother's face the day he drew that, she had walked into his room just as he was leaping from the bed to the dresser, chasing after the gorilla and pretending to swing on jungle vines like Tarzan. On the next page, Abraham Lincoln was wearing his tall black hat and looking relieved on the day Henry had traveled back in time and saved the Civil War from being invaded by aliens. Across another page raced a pirate ship with Henry himself, sword in hand, battling a peg-legged pirate. That ship had been his favorite drawing, until now. The dragon... The marvelous chalk dragon beat them all. A breeze made the pages flutter, and Henry jumped to his feet and ran to shut the window. Outside, the real night sky, with its real shooting stars, not chalky ones, crowded around the pent whistle house, trying to spy on the night in his adventure. But Henry pulled the curtains closed. He and the world had a deal. He would keep away from its silly chatter and its honking horns, its math equations and its shopping malls, its confusing rules and its laughing faces, and in return, the world would keep out of his bedroom. For in this room, behind this door, lay a deeper magic and a wilder story than the world had ever seen, or ever would see, as long as the door stayed shut. Henry opened his sketchbook to a blank page, and there he drew the wonderful dragon that was on his door. Hold still, he told the dragon sternly. He drew the dragon poop and the trees and the towers and dragon-fighting monster trucks, and he drew himself, leaping off a mountain and doing the super sneaky sideways sword swipe. Then he let the pencil drop to the floor and shut the book quickly. He could have sworn the dragon's eyes had turned toward his castle. It was made entirely of Legos, matchsticks, shoelaces, tissues, scotch tape, and gumdrops. He had spent a whole week building it piece by piece. Henry picked up his sword and dashed to the castle gate. Oh, no, you don't. I will defend Camelot from... He stopped. Behind the castle, in the corner of the bedroom, was another pile of Legos. It was the ruins of a scientific laboratory, with a broken Lego microscope and toilet paper roll test tubes, and a magnifying glass made of plastic wrap stretched over a bubble wand. Oscar had built it. Oscar was Henry's best friend. Except for sometimes. And one of those sometimes was still hovering like a dark cloud of memory around the little plastic laboratory. 
Henry shoved it all into the closet and shut the closet door so he wouldn't have to think about it. You kidnapped Oscar, didn't you? I knew it. Where are you keeping him? Henry aimed his sword at the dragon's heart. What? Of course he's not a knight, he scoffed as if the dragon had spoken. He's a scientist. Last summer he was an astronaut and built a spaceship in his garage, and now he's a paleontologist. He studies fossils and dinosaurs and things that are really old and dead. He even dug up an ancient bird bath in his backyard. A pterodactyl probably used it. Anyway, he's important. The dragon stared back at Henry, unblinking and unimpressed. So, Henry continued, I demand that you let him go this instant. Suddenly, the chalk dragon swung toward him, turned around, and beat its head against the wall, because Henry's mother had opened the door and swung it wide. Mom, wailed Henry, you always interrupt. Okay, readers, that's the end of the first chapter. If you'd like to hear more of this story, call the library or visit bowbakerfreelibrary.org to reserve Henry and the Chalk Dragon by Jennifer Trafton. If you like this story, you might also enjoy Jennifer Trafton's earlier book, The Rise and Fall of Mount Majestic, a fantastical journey that features giants and other creatures come to life. Thank you for listening to this episode of First Chapter Fridays. Tune in again next week for another great story.